Hey everybody, uh, this is Mitchell Miller with BlazerTV.com and we're having a sit down here with Paul Delaney III, uh, PD3 for short, as we know uh, most of the fan base would refer you refer to you as a uh, former point guard for UAB. Man, how you doing, man? You doing good? I'm blessed. I'm doing great. Uh, no complaints at all. So tell the fans a little bit uh, about what you've been doing since since your departure from UAB and, and, and where you've been playing and, and how your game's been keeping up. Well, since my departure, after my first year, I went to Israel. I played there for a full year in uh, Nairia. Uh, we ended the season uh, pretty shaky. Uh, I left, came back, went over to Israel, played in the second division this past year, and we won the second division championship. And now we're moving up to first division next year. When did you get back into the States? Just No, I got back uh, end of May, around May 25th, somewhere in there. And you're going back in August, is that right? Or? August 25th is a ten tentative date. Uh, very flexible, though. Yeah. So how long do they usually give you as far as breaks when you're, when you're out there playing? Uh, roughly it depends on what time you usually get done with their season. Uh, different countries have different time periods. But in Israel, you usually end between mid to end of May and always come back to beginning to end of August. When you first get to Israel, is there anything – we talked to multiple players that go over to Europe and, uh, and, and go over overseas, and they're like, I had to make some major adjustments. Is there anything you notice right off the bat that – you were just like, whoa, this is different. The culture uh, is very different to me. It was a shock. Uh, but once you get used to, you know, get to know the area around you, get to know your surroundings, it becomes like second nature. You know, now I go back, I know it like the back of my hands, like a second home to me. Is there any foods or anything that you notice right off the Because I know we're sitting right now and we're in Ted's restaurant, which you told me we got to do this at Ted's because. Uh, because this is your favorite food, so obviously this is what you want to get when you come home. But in Israel, I mean, what are you eating over there? I mean, they have restaurants. They eat a lot of meat, a lot of chicken, uh, grilled chicken, baked chicken. But they really don't do fried foods. They do a lot of salads, uh, mixed salads. And that's really about it. But myself, personally, I like to cook. You know, I'm trying to become like a little personal chef for myself. So I spend a lot of time in the kitchen myself. All right, so your time at UAB. Man, you, you're one of those players that you came in under Mike Anderson, transitioned into Coach Davis. What was that like for you as a player to, to, to kind of go from one system to the other? It was rough being at such a young age, coming up to my sophomore year. It was tough, didn't know what to expect. But I can say the change worked out well for me because under Coach da Davis, I was uh, allowed to take my game to a higher level. So I think it worked well for me in both situations. Is there anything as a, as a point guard that was different as you, that you were taught soon after with the switch? Or? Well, when I was under Coach Anderson, I was uh, able to learn from Squeaky, you know, playing behind him. So a lot of things that I had learned, I took up from watching him play as a freshman and sophomore. And then when Coach Davis came along, I was allowed with coaches that helped me with more of an NBA-style point guard. Uh, coming off the pick and rolls, learning how to make my decisions. So I can say they grew me a little mentally more with Coach Davis came. A lot of a lot of uh, a lot of people kind of give you three the nickname you Vaden and uh, Lawrence Kennard. They got uh, Van Delaney and all kinds of weird nicknames. Can you describe your relationship with them while you were there? I mean, you, you still you still talk to those guys, or I mean? Yeah, I just got off the phone with Vaden and Law actually today before I came in here. Uh, we have a tight-knit relationship. You know, those years that we played were fun. They were great. You know, we have no complaints, no regrets. You know, I have fun out there with the court with them guys, and, you know, we'll always be close. So as long as, you know, we're able to talk to each other and come in contact, I believe, you know, we'll always remain close. When you, when you look back at your career at UAB, is there any particular moment um, or in a game where you're like, I remember that and I'll always remember that, a big game or – or a play. I mean, a lot of people say, "Well, I don't really, I don't really bother with that." Or I remember that. If I, if I could go back to that moment, is there anything like that? I mean, there's no regrets, but. No regrets. I say the one play that actually stuck in my mind was playing Louisville, yeah, down in Kentucky, and right before the halftime, Vaden threw me the alley hoop almost from half court, and I dunked it with two hands to end it. It was kind of nice, you know. That, that was one of them plays. Like, uh, if I can go back, I can relive that moment. Yeah. It was nice.
Uh, your junior season, I mean, you come out strong. You kind of put yourself on the map. I mean, everybody started talking, well, okay, here we go. And then you start out and with the injury the next year. And, I mean, just take us through that process of, of finding out you're not gonna you're not gonna play and and, and just what that was like. Well, when I first uh, heard my knee pop in the game against George Southern, I knew right then and there it was something serious that I was gonna be out for for a while. So I was just really hoping that I was able to get the medical red shirt, which I was. So I was thankful for that. And I mean, after that, it was just a grind, you know. Uh, after the surgery, me and Lou and Brian. It was just so it was just time to grind, you know, hitting the weight room, hitting the, you know, train room would be every day like clockwork. You know, just had to get back and I always want to get back, you know, bigger and stronger and better than I was before I had the injury. So I wouldn't let the injury define me as a person. Now, a lot of people that come come after injury like that, they, they, they kinda have a a vendetta to get back in it. Was that was that the point when you when you finally got out, what did it feel like to get back out on the on the home floor after coming back from that injury? There's no feeling. I loved it. You know, I remember why I chose to come to UAB, the reason why I chose to play the game of basketball. It's like when you get injured and something gets taken away that you love, it, it hurts. You know, you're in a, a dark place somewhat. And when you're able to finally break through and being the person that you know that you was out on the court, especially proving to myself that I was better than what I was, it was a great feeling. There's no feeling like it. Can you describe a little bit just about UAB? I mean, you mentioned how much, I mean, those memories are fond of you. I mean, when you first came here, what did you notice about the school in particular, the, or the fan base? or? I noticed that the school was spread out, uh, spread out throughout downtown. I mean, the fan base was great. You know, that was one of the reasons why I came. I felt like the program was starting to uh, thrive and starting to get a lot of not notoriety for, the, for their play. And I mean, it was just, I was just excited. You know, a second step. I was away from home, so it was just, let's get ready and let's get started, so. You, you're playing, you, you, you're playing these games. You got a lot of stuff coming up. Everybody's kind of pumped up about you guys, you three in particular, especially when we find that you, you can get your, your medical red shirt and, and you're coming back. Describe just the feeling at the end of the season, I mean, that whole season in particular, there's a lot of hype coming in. Um, what did it feel like to, to not – your goal was obviously to reach the NCAA tournament. That didn't happen. I mean, did you feel like that was something that you guys earned? Because a lot of people would say that you guys earned it. I believe so. But, you know, it wasn't up to us. It was up to the committee. But, I mean, at the end of the season, we was all proud. I mean, if you looked at the situations that we went through during that one year, you know – uh, between people leaving, people ineligible. I mean, yeah, look at one time we only had, I think, six scholarship players on the roster. You know, and we was able to go out there and compete with the best of them day in and day out. So, I mean, at the end of the season, we were proud because we was able to accomplish more than what people thought we were with the team that we had. And so I say we had great leadership. We had a very senior-oriented team, and, you know, I believe we had a great season. Now, you, you're obviously playing – you mentioned you were playing overseas. I mean, is there anybody that you kind of took their game and, and, and kind of were like, I, I want to be like that guy? Is there anybody like that that growing up or even coming to UAB and seeing other professionals play that you're like, I, that's that's it? Uh, the only person I can say that was my dad. Watching him play, I said I had to be better than that guy, you know. <laughs> I mean, he was good, and where we were in the city of Atlanta, he was a legend, and I always used to hear how good he was. So, I mean, that was who I looked up, and that's who I put my measuring stick up to. So that's the guy that said that I wanted to be better and imitated my game after. Who did you have in the NBA last year? I mean, everybody Heat fan? Not a Heat fan, please, please. No, I'm not a Heat fan. I'm an Atlanta Hawks fan. I'm oh, Atlanta, okay. Atlanta, right. Atlanta Braves. So, you know, Atlanta Braves, Atlanta Hawks. When we had the Thrashers, Thrashers, you know, Falcons. Yeah, well, you know, so we're going, we're going through a tough time right now, but we're about to come out on top. Everything's going to be all right. Now, we know that you keep up with the other basketball players. I mean, that Vaden and, and, and Lawrence. Is there any other athletes that you kind of had a connection with at UAB that you still keep in contact uh, with? or Walter. I still talk to Walter Sharp from time to time. Um, Chan and Tony, uh, yeah, I talked to him not too long ago up in Atlanta. Um, 
Terrence Roderick before he left. Uh, me and him, we still communicate. I still talk to Howard, Frank, you know. We pretty much, you know, everybody has their own lives, which is, you know, understandable, but we still able to keep in touch, whether it's by Facebook, Twitter, Skype. You know, we keep in some form of contact. You ever played with them? No, I mean, I mean, who do you think now, if you got those guys together, who do you think would still have it? I mean, like they did in, in the college days or even better now. I mean, everybody. You're- Everybody, everybody. Everybody. I mean, that's, that's the that's the part of growing up. That's part of becoming a professional. When you get to that certain level, your game should improve, you know, whether it's uh, physically or just mentally. So I believe everybody has reached a higher level than what we were in college. I mean, you say that like it was like five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. We still, we still hooping now. We still, yeah. we still got it. We still improving. You know, we haven't even reached our prime yet. So I uh, look forward to a lot of guys, you know, from UAB doing a lot of big things. Well, I mean, we're certainly we're certainly keeping up with you guys. I mean, we talked to Channing Tony not too long ago, a couple of months ago. I mean, he's excited, and obviously Lawrence and and you guys, we try and keep up with that. And 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 Vaden, obviously, he's what he's doing, what he did with the 66ers this year. Uh-huh. And uh, I mean, that's just you got we, picked up for the playoffs. Yeah. Well, Oklahoma yeah. City. Yeah. We were all hoping to get to see him get that ring, despite yeah. everything. But uh, the Heat got to the finals instead. I don't, can't yeah, stand that. Know, but I mean. You had a lot of people that thought some. Some people thought the Lakers were gonna make it. You know, it's just not a lot of nonsense that was going around this year. You know, but I think the best team ended up winning. You know uh, we we wanna. I wanna ask you a little bit about um, just coming back here to Birmingham. We talked about UAB, but the actual city. I mean, we're at Ted's. That's that's one of your hot spots. What are some other things that you may miss about the city uh, in general? Really. It's just the people, you know, the people that I was, I hung out with, the people that I met, you know, that's that was from around here. You know, I made a lot of good connections, a lot of good friendships from a lot of people that was just from the city. You know, not necessarily going to a place in the city, but it was, you know, who I interacted with that actually made my time in Birmingham uh, an easier transition than for most people. So, I mean, that's why I say for one thing in Birmingham, I just miss the people, you know, having that constant interaction like I did back in college. I heard a story about about you and AJ, and you you kind of bringing AJ into the fold. I don't know if you remember this or not. Apparently, you were you were pretty rough on AJ when he was first here to try and get him up. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us anything about maybe the interaction between the older guys and the younger guys, and, and getting them into the Blazer fold? I mean, somebody told me. Man, I watched him, and AJ. I mean, he just embarrassed AJ on the court, and uh, and it just that's just part of growing up. I mean, that's everywhere you go. You know, anytime you come in, and you know you're a freshman. You know, you have older dudes. It happened with me when I was a freshman. I came in. You know, there's times where you're gonna get beat because you're just not learning. But at the same time, you understand that those guys are doing it because it's out of respect. They want you're coming to play with on a basketball team that wants to get better. So if I'm not pushing you to get better, you're not pushing me to get better. We're not doing each other's job. I mean, look at AJ, uh, player of the year, you know. So, you know, great things can happen, you know, and he deserves it. And, you know, everything's possible no matter. It's just hard work. You put in your time and eventually your reckon- your recognition will get known. So where can people find you now, I mean, if they want to if they want to check out what you're doing? I mean, hopefully we can help yeah. check uh, provide people with what you're doing overseas as far as basketball related. But what can people – do to kind of find uh, you out? You know, you can, uh, I mean, I'm on Facebook. Uh, well, my home, what's, what's her Twitter? Uh, the Gift of Gal, you know, you can follow her, you know, ask her, you know, you can call Tez, you can even come eat at Tez, you know, they know what I'm doing, you know. Hey, you know, you can come in, I'm, I'm everywhere, you know, it's Somebody's always, find you. yeah, always, you know, if you come in, if you, I'm telling you, if you, if you check her out, follow her to, God's Gift of Gab, Gift of Gab, she'll know. <laughs> And call, come in, Ted's, you know, they'll know, you know, I'm around, not hard to find. Well, we appreciate it, man, and we, we hope you, we wish you the best in all, in all of what you're doing, and we hope to, hope to get some stories from other people about you, from uh, Lawrence when we catch up with him and maybe some other guys. I mean, I'm sure there's some stuff they could tell us about you, some dirty stuff. Oh, you know, you know also that we keep, keep between each other, you know. <laughs> what happened in the locker room stays in the locker room, you know. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no dishing out dirty laundry around here. Yeah, everything's close-knit, you know. I uh, mean, I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Ask for rope. <laughs>